simple image which speaks louder than words of the possibility of a ground war. 50,000 grave sites, which Saudi Arabia is digging near the Kuwaiti border. Different sections are being prepared for the Egyptians, Kuwaitis and Saudis who may die in a land attack. All of them are being dug facing the holy city of Mecca. And on the eve of a possible ground war, a reminder of our coverage of the Gulf. Baseball and cricket were surprised to hear Baghdad's claim that they were spearheading an advance into Iraqi territory. Instead, they're in the same place they have been for quite a while and doing the things that men do while waiting for battle. That includes writing home, looking after each other, must say that my mum still does a better job. and attending mass at the back of a challenger tank. The chaplain talks a lot about the war. I pray every night for the poor old souls up there on the border who are having so many bombs dropped upon them. The loss of life up there must be absolutely horrific. It doesn't matter whether they're Iraqi, British or whatever, human life is sacred. And war sometimes is a horrible, well, it's always a horrible evil, but sometimes a necessary evil. In this case, I believe, a necessary evil. The men are being briefed in troops and squadrons on the battle plan and their part in the war. The common assumption is that it is inevitable. I know that all of us have now decided that we are going to war and therefore we're preparing, doing our last minute preparations to make sure that we're fully ready to go. I think they've been messing about enough. Politicians have had their chance. Let's get in. Mark Woody, the talking forum. For obvious reasons, I cannot give the times and dates and operational details, but nothing has prepared the Iraqis, not even the bombing of the past five weeks, for the force of the blow that is about to be delivered against them. According to one senior British officer here, we are about to embark on what he calls the last great adventure. Others take a more somber view of it. But the period of waiting in the desert is nearly over. Immediately, but uh, just a few minutes after the deadline passed, I went outside the tent here and um, listened. And you can hear the sound of the bombers droning overhead towards the border, towards the Iraqi positions and they go inexorably, minute after minute, more and more bombers. So I suppose that is one sign when you're quite near Iraqi positions that um, things are, uh, are not changed from the past few days, but they have a certain sense of inevitability now. Yes, what is the reaction among the troops on the ground to the clear prospect of the ground offensive being inevitable? I suppose it's very difficult to sum it up for everyone and one wouldn't like to speak for all of them. Individuals have their own view, but they they all, I suppose, everyone now has a sense of the inevitable, that it's uh, what has been talked about, what has been trained for, and what they are ready for may be about to happen. I think at least the people who are in the army here, in the British Army and in the Allies, at least know one thing, and something which, though it may seem something naive to say, the Iraqis may not have grasped. Over the past few days and the past few weeks with the Allied bombings, there has been the most tremendous um, attack on positions by the aircraft and by the guns, particularly this week, and it's got more and more intense as the days have gone by. This is as nothing compared to what may come. The firepower here and the intentions and the determination of the Allies is very great indeed. And earlier in London, Kuwaitis in exile waited apprehensively as the minutes ticked away to the expiry of the Allied ultimatum to Saddam Hussein. There was a sombre mood amongst exiled Kuwaitis here as the deadline came and went with no sign of an Iraqi withdrawal. The final Allied ultimatum to Iraq to begin the pullout from Kuwait expired a few seconds ago. Few expected Saddam Hussein would comply and there was resigned acceptance that a ground war would be needed to force him out. We knew all along he would never comply with any international resolutions and he has just proved that his uh, reliance on his own power can only be answered by brutal force and power, which is the only language he'll understand, to get him out. Most Kuwaitis think any ground war would be short, but few doubt the devastating impact it's likely to have on their country. We know it's going to be house-to-house -house fighting and we know that means more uh, killing for the civilians and a lot of the Kuwaitis as well. Unfortunately, we have no choice. Um, the Kuwaiti people have been calling for an intervention from the beginning. They're taking the chance because for them it's better than just waiting and being killed and tortured and rounded up. Most Kuwaitis say they gave up hope of a peaceful end to this conflict months ago and they're now urging Allied commanders not to delay in launching a massive and decisive ground attack to liberate their country.